Today I want to take a look at PowerShell logs and a couple of things we can use to better optimize. Whenever you're doing a scheduled job in particular, did the script do what it, we needed it to? Were there any errors? How long did it take? Which user and computer ran the script? Even what was the name of the PS1 that, that invoked? Uh, there's a lot of different detail we'd like to collect historically. And start transcript is our essential command for getting that done, which we see here on line 8. But I found that you can tweak it a little bit, add a couple of extra things that really make it more valuable. Uh, for example, adding a prefix with the name of the script file that invoked. So this is the PS1, the parent that actually invoked the script. And then we could suffix it essentially with the, the date and time. Uh, formatted to remove any invalid characters like colons and forward slashes. So if you have the parent invoking PS1, you have the date time well formatted, you can go ahead and start your transcript in a more structured way. Uh, additionally, we can add a slash log subfolder to keep things organized, where we're looking at only the logs by themselves, kind of apart from the PS1 code. So when you're navigating the folders, is our purpose to review logs? Go to the log folder. If it's to edit and review code, we work in the parent folder. And there's an implied relationship parent-child because log is a subfolder. And then down here at the bottom, we can close it out with an elapsed duration. And this is going to show things like uh, hours, minutes, and seconds. Uh, how long did it take to execute? The normal start and stop transcript will give you a timestamp. When did it start? When did it finish? It will not subtract the two to show you duration. And duration is really what we're looking for from a business perspective. How long did this take to execute? So when you're designing your code, you can go ahead and put a main function that makes it uh, very organized. And then you can add additional helper functions and go ahead and name those out, maybe import modules, things like that. But when it comes to transcript and logging, I have found it helpful to open the log with a custom file name and a custom folder and then write the duration before closing the log. And these simple activities of I'm putting my logs in the log folder, I'm naming them after the parent script so they're easy to find, I'm stamping them with the duration, how long did it take to run, how many hours and minutes and seconds. These simple activities kind of to open your log before the execution and close the log afterwards will make any of your scheduled jobs easier to support. Thanks for watching.